what's going on everybody? Stephen Bear King here with another episode of Live Chess here on the chess.com server. I'm Stephen Bear King. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, right now what you see is a, a top game going on. And when you first log into the Live Chess chess server, this is what you'll see is, you know, whoever the top players are playing at the time a live game, it's going to pop up for you. So we see here an international master playing uh, another chess.com member. So we're just going to jump out of that game real quick. We're not here to watch that. We're here to play. And we're going to go ahead and look for a game. We're going to try to do another best. Two out of three, maybe just two games, regardless of what the results are, just to keep the video at a reasonable time. Not a lot of people are going to want to sit there and watch an hour or two of chess. So we'll try to keep it short. We're going to play a scotch game like I always do. Every chance that I get, it's my favorite way to play. I uh, consider that if they take knight takes knight, and queen takes knight. That's a mistake for black right off the bat. So I always hope for my opponent to do that. And I pre-move just to make sure. My opponent didn't do that. He moves his knight to a central square. Which is a square that it will end up going to in a lot of situations anyways. Um, but right now I'm not way too much worried about it. I'm going to go ahead and develop my pieces normally. And uh, see how he wants to play the position. If he's going to just move pawns and things like that. Then he's more than welcome to do that. And we're going to go ahead and, let's see, I'm going to go ahead and defend that knight and get castled quickly, but we're also going to go ahead and maybe defend this square either by developing the bishop or moving the pawn. And in this case, we might want to move the pawn because that's going to defend our pawn as well as defend this square. So. And then we can move our bishop to another square, maybe over here on the c4 square, or in a different position later on. But right now we're just going to go ahead and castle. And after we castle, we're going to start moving our pawns on this side. We have a lead in development here, um, which is always going to be a good thing. And so if we just go ahead and we'll throw this pawn forward. Without calculating anything, we're just going to go straight for an attack. We're going to go ahead and throw this pawn forward now that he's coming and defending this square a little bit. And then we still probably will develop our bishop over here to the e2 square. That way, if we do want to advance this pawn forward or if we you know, advance these pawns forward, we're still protecting some of the light squares in this direction. We're still watching light squares in this direction, so I would assume that the bishop here on e2 is going to be a decent square for the bishop for the moment. Uh, another thing that will do is it will complete my development and connect the two rooks. And if you uh, watch any of Yasser Sarawan's videos on uh, the St. Louis Chess Club YouTube channel, then you would know that his definition of going into the middle game is as soon as you've connected your rooks and your pieces are developed, you've started the middle game and then that's where you're really going to need a middle game plan. So my opponent castled right into the direction where I'm going to start my attack. Um, so we're going to hopefully pry, pry some of these lines open, maybe bring my rook over to this file and start trying to get to where all of our pieces are aiming down at this black king over here since he's the target in any chess game if you're new to chess. The whole point of chess is to checkmate this king and sometimes you can do that right in the middle game and don't even have to go to an end game and that's what we're going to try to go for here. So he did start his attack over on the queen side which is what he's supposed to do is come after my queen. So I'm really enjoying the fact that we've used our time well in this game. We're at 4 minutes and 18 seconds actually a lead in develop or a excuse me a uh, a lead on the clock uh, for one of the first time I think in any of my live chess videos so I'll probably end up using it now because we're at a critical a critical situation where I can maybe exchange this piece off but before you just start trading minor pieces you really want to consider if it's gonna you know be beneficial and every time you do that you're gonna change the pawn structure and there's gonna be a lot of uh, crucial points to the position that are gonna happen depending on whether you're gonna take this piece or ignore it um, right now he is attacking my queen so I definitely have to react to that threat one way or the other either by moving my piece or uh, either by moving my piece or taking his piece and right now I'm kinda of thinking I don't know if I want to give this bishop up right away 
for this knight. I can do that later on. If I move my queen up here, he could always just move back, and then we might be repeating the position. So I think... Uh, Oh, but we got to look at the fact, too, that if I do move my queen, then my bishop over here is hanging. So we might be, because I did want to play down, move my piece down here and start getting it towards this side of the board. But we can't afford to let this bishop hang. That would be a nasty blunder at this point. So we'll go ahead. I think the only way he could take back anyways is with this pawn, which ruins his pawn structure a little bit. But also opens this B file that looks down towards my king position. And he can move his rook over in that direction. But he went ahead and took that way, which I'm not sure is the best. So he took my knight, and now he's going to recapture the bishop. But that just brings my queen to a better position while dropping that pawn. Um, so I really, I don't know if that was the best move. And he's not going to be able to defend this pawn anytime soon. So maybe we should ignore it for the moment. We can come in and threaten a nasty little checkmate with this move. So since it's a blitz game, let's go ahead and do that. Threatening checkmate in one. My opponent might miss it. Probably not. I would assume that he's not going to miss it. Simple, uh, <laughs> simple move of the queen to defend it or something like that would be more than sufficient. We do still want to get these pawns rolling on this side and open it up so that way my rooks don't look completely foolish right here. So let's go ahead and we'll grab this pawn. We're not in the mood to trade uh, to trade queens right now. If he brings the rook over, which I assumed he would, we can just blunt it with this. And that also gives us the opportunity maybe to get our, our bishop to this square and attack the queen and once again be putting a lot of pressure down on on this square over here which if we can get these pawns out of the way then we'll have substantial amount of pressure over on this side of the board he did keep me from developing my bishop to a better square but that's okay because we're going to go ahead and uh, sack a pawn in this position I think it's a pawn sack I do have the bishop guarding the square as well as the rook and the pawn so it's not a pawn sack I don't believe but we uh, we definitely aren't going to be taking back with the pawn. We're going to go ahead and isolate this pawn just for the the one reason of bringing these pieces out and on this uh, beautiful line aiming at the king. So that's our goal. We could probably double up on this line. We have the queen, the knight, and uh, in a minute both of the rooks facing his king, which should be really good. And we could just drive this H pawn down towards and crack open the position. So let's go ahead and we'll double. I might have needed to play this move first because, yeah, there he went and got the, the king out of the way. But the king's still in a pretty precarious situation. He's not happy with himself at all. So we're going to see if we can finish off this game pretty quickly here with a win that'll be good uh, once again if you haven't seen my last video we are using new headset hopefully that's going to take care of the echo and some of the longer videos save it from having to go back and re-edit the echo out of the videos just to make it better I, I think the live commentary is a little bit better than having to go back and and re-commentate over something that's happened in the past not as exciting as my views on something that's going on right at the time and I think at this point he's just lost because he's losing the queen and it's going to be checkmate. So simple as that, checkmate coming on the board pretty soon here. My opponent resigned. Let's go ahead and get rid of that. See if he wants a rematch, if we could do best two out of three. I'm not going to tell him good game because it's kind of rude. I think uh, International Master Daniel Ranch kind of talked about the etiquette of you know chess on the internet and when your opponent loses even though you know your first instinct is is to say hey good game your opponent might not think that he played that good of a game you might be insulting him by saying you know hey good game you lost so if your opponent says good game when he loses you know say thank you uh if you lose then i think it's more than appropriate to tell your opponent good game good that they outplayed you and everything so it doesn't look like he's going to rematch, so we're going to go ahead and jump into just one more real quick. I got the black pieces, which is only fair. My opponent's a little bit lower rated. We're going to jump into a Sicilian. Uh, he's going to play the early bishop to c4 lines, which 
I'm not the biggest fan of playing against. And I kind of did uh, play a little bit different than I usually play. So I'm in uh, new territories for the way I play. I don't usually play this E6 line. I usually develop regular... Well, I guess probably I have played this line before. I just... It's not my favorite. I'd much rather play an open Sicilian. Which is what he's kind of transposed into. And... I'm going to go ahead and do a, something a little bit different. And play like this. If he wants to trade queens and go into an end game, we can do that. And we're going to want to need to get castled pretty quickly here. So, if I move my knight here and he pushes forward, we can come to a different square. This is not, this opening has not gone the best for me, but now that he's trade queens, I feel a little bit less nervous about the whole thing. I'm no longer able to castle queenside. He's going to bring his rook out with a tempo, but that's okay. So we'll go ahead and we'll drop back into this area. And again, this this isn't looking perfect for me at all, but I think I might be able to wiggle my way out. I can bring my bishop to this square just because the knight's defending it for the moment. And then we're going to try to get our pieces going. It's kind of strange because his king's on this side, so I would you know prefer to attack his king. And my position over here is already compromised a little bit, so it's not like the biggest deal, I suppose, to move these pawns forward and create more weaknesses. But we did manage to close up the middle a little bit and get our own little chunk of the center, thanks to our opponent allowing that. It's not anything that we did by design, just something that happened to uh, come out. So let's bring this rook down towards this way. If my opponent doesn't realize it, I might just pull his piece out with a tempo against his bishop and then be able to quickly double against his file. And once you have a little bit of pressure and your opponent has to react to the moves that you're playing, then you know, you're gaining a little bit of an initiative and that really helps out in a chess game when you're controlling and dictating the play of the game. See, as he's constantly having to react to my threats he's not able to just play what he wants to play so that's really good so and we did get him to move one of his pawns in front of his king so now we can drop this bishop back towards this area where it's defending a lot of our light square weaknesses and we can put some pressure towards this pawn he quickly doubles on his file and not too clear how I'm going to blow this position open, but that was a mistake. I don't know how long that bishop's been hanging there. Probably probably for a long time since that was the point of moving my rook up was to gain a tempo on that bishop. And he must have not moved it and I must not have took it. So that's what happens when you're commentating a chess game while you're trying to play. You're not calculating everything. You're just trying to talk and be entertaining and play the game and, you know, try not to completely blunder. So... We'll go ahead and do this. I think this should be okay. And that way if we want to go ahead and trade to a few pieces. Because I'm uh, up a few pawns I believe. Different things to consider. And so if I play here he takes. I could take the rook first I think. And he would have to take the rook back. I, th I think we could do this. So that way if he takes, we take. And then if he recaptures, we recapture. Oh, he can recapture that with check. So that wasn't the best. We did drop a pawn that we didn't need to. But let's go ahead and corral up this pawn. The one thing is, is I'm up a bishop and I don't think I'm down pawns for it. So we can kind of corral this pawn. 
let's see. Let's keep his king trapped out of the way a little bit. His rook is not on a good square to defend this pawn, so he is just losing the pawn over here. And this should be easily winning. It's just going to take a little bit of time. My opponent's going to think, you know, use some of his time up to defend these bad uh, positions here. So I'm going to go ahead and create some space for this bishop. And we can come down and attack this pawn. We can move our king up to keep him out of certain squares. And... Let's see. So we can do this. Okay. And so now we're going to create some connected pass pawns here. And we'll probably just go ahead and trade the you know my advantage here for my advantage on this side of the board maybe not quite yet because he did allow me to come down now <laughs> oh that was a mistake but luckily my opponent did not capitalize on it I uh, if he would have stayed where he was attacking the bishop I would have had two pieces hanging and that would have been like a real tide turner in this game but luckily my opponent was not aware of that simple little tactic that I blundered there. And so let's go ahead and get the rook off of this file. Off of this rank, I should say. I don't like him on this lateral rank where he's defending his pawns a little bit by being, you know, on the same rank of him. Now this is just completely winning. And my opponent went ahead and resigned, and that's going to go ahead and do it for this episode of Best 2 Out of 3. We didn't get the disconnect on the end of this video, so we were able to win. Uh, my opponent's already bailed out of the chat, so we don't have to say anything to him. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. We did pull 2 out of 3 out of this one, so go ahead and hit that like button. If you're new to my channel, subscribe for more videos. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter, at Stephen Bear King. Thank you, thank you so much for joining me. If you made it all the way to the end, you're a real boss. Have a great day. Peace.